Hey, welcome to 15.1. We're going to learn about circles today. Circles. Uh, the radius, diameter, the circumference in the area. And you're going to find out why it's so important to keep in mind that cherry pie is delicious and apple pies are too. Put that in your brain. Cherry pie is delicious. Apple pies are too. So let's start with some definitions. A lot of these are review, so we can just kind of brush through them, you know. I'm going to refresh your memory. Uh, if you need to pause the video to write these down, go ahead and pause the video. So the first definition is circle. What is a circle? Well, a circle is a set of points that are equidistant from a center point. Okay, so we take a center point, which is like, we'll put right here, and then all the points that are equidistant. So, you know, if I had to go five centimeters away, okay, well, I go five centimeters in this direction. I can go five centimeters in this direction. They're all five centimeters away from that center point. Right, and then we just keep doing that. Think of like maybe you have a rope that's five centimeters long and all the points that are five centimeters from that middle part. And then what you'll find is you will, if you go to infinity, we say, take the infinite number of points, it creates a circle. I'm doing a terrible job, but you kind of get the point, right? So if you get all of the points, all of them, then the set of those points that are equidistant from a center point is called a circle. All right, well, where is the center? It's the point in the middle. It's equidistant from all the points on the circle. So if you measure from the outside of the circle to the center, it'll be the same for all of those points. Now, other words that we use, radius. The radius is the distance from the center to the circle. So it's this far. That is a radius. Now, you can go in any direction, but we're talking about a distance. So how far is that distance? That is called the radius. Now the diameter is like the radius, but instead of going to the center, it goes through the center to the other side, and it's that distance. So the diameter is the distance through the center across the entire circle to the other side. That is the diameter. Now, circumference, this might be new for you. Circumference is the distance around the circle. So if I were to measure with a bendy measuring tape all the way around the circle. That is called the circumference. And lastly, we have the area. And the area is the region contained within the circle. So most of the time we do some shading, like that whole area on the inside. Think about carpet or if you're painting, that whole area there, it's flat and it's contained. That is called the area of the circle. So those are all of the different definitions that we need. Go ahead and write them down. We'll get to the next part, which is our first formula. So our first formula here, we'll call it rule number one. The diameter is twice the radius. And that makes sense, right? Because the radius is halfway across, the diameter is all the way. So if you know what the radius is, you can double it and you will find the diameter. So here's a nice little formula we can use. Although most students don't need to use the formula, they can just look at the picture and figure it out. So for the first one, find the diameter. Well, what do we have here? The radius is seven. So going all the way to the other side here. Oh, I'm gonna do my best. Let's try it with a little tool property here instead of, uh, instead of my freehand here. But this distance from here all the way across, that would be the diameter. We know that the radius is seven. So that means that the diameter must be seven times two. So I'm just gonna write seven times two which equals 14, and I'm gonna include those units. So 14 centimeters, okay. There we go, clean that up a little bit. So finding the diameter is easy, finding the radius just as easy, except we gotta work backwards. When you see the entire line there, the diameter is 19 feet, okay? What do we need to do to find the radius? We're gonna take 19 and we are going to divide that by two, right? So, or cut it in half. So 19 divided by two, that's gonna equal what, 9.5, and we're gonna include those units as well, feet in this case. All right, so finding the diameter and radius, super easy. Let's go to the next part, circumference and diameter. Now these are a little bit different, and they're kinda of tricky. So let me take you back. You don't have to write this part down. This is purely for your viewing pleasure, so you don't have to write it down. But I wanna give you a little bit of history here about some of the tools that we're gonna use. So way back when they, uh, you know, way back a long time ago, we're talking a thousand years ago, okay, they were doing math. And one of the things they would do is measure the circumference of circles. 
Okay, so they would use, you know, whatever means they had. First they would pace it off and then they got, you know, better methods to to measure it. And they would take a circle and they would measure the circumference. Okay, so they'd walk around. Well, this is a pizza, so maybe a swimming pool here. But let's do the pizza. They would walk around the outside or they would measure around the outside and then they would measure the diameter. And here's what they found. Whenever they took the circumference of any circle, any circle, this is cherry pie by the way, it's great. Any circle you divide the circumference by the diameter, they would always get about the same number, 3.14. And then depending on how well you measured, it might be a little bit different. But that was true for every circle. If they walked around, now this doesn't look like a circle because we're kind of like, we're not straight above it. But if they walked around this circle and they measured all the way around the outside, okay, and then they measured across the very middle of it, and they found the circumference, whatever that was, and divided by the diameter, it would work out to 3.14 for every single circle. Every circle, it does that. That's incredible. So I'm just going to abbreviate here. That means that the circumference divided by the diameter equals 3.14. They gave this 3.14 a special name. Look at this little thing. It's like, it's called pi, okay? So it's P-I, is how you spell it, P-I, and it's pi. It's a Greek letter. They just said, we'll just, instead of writing 3.14, we'll just write this letter, and it means 3.14. So the circumference divided by the diameter for any circle was this pi. Okay, well, I'm going to do a little bit of algebra here. I'm going to multiply both sides by D, and we're going to see what we get. All right, these will cancel. You remember how to do this way back in those earlier units. We're going to get circumference, because they'll cancel, equals pi times the diameter. All right, well, that is our first formula. Why is this useful? Well, now I can take the diameter, and if I multiply it by pi, this 3.14, then I will get the circumference. I can actually figure out what the circumference is going to be. All right, now we are going to use 3.14 for pi. Sometimes people use like fractions 22 over seven. Uh, sometimes, you know, if you wanna keep going, you wanna be really accurate, 3.14159. You'll notice that your calculators actually have a pi button. Check this out, so here's our calculator. If you go over right here, see that little, that little thing, right? That's a pi, so if you hit second, and then that button to, to make it blue and you hit enter. This is actually 3.14159264. That's being really accurate. All right, we don't need to be that accurate. But we use those little wavy lines, which means approximately equal to, it's an equal sign with some waves, and it means that pi is approximately equal to 3.14. Okay, so now we learned where pi comes from. So now we have a formula that we can use. And we have actually two formulas. The first one, you just saw where that came from. So the circumference equals pi times diameter. That's the rule number two. Now, here's what some people do. They like everything in terms of radius. They like radius better than diameter. So they go like this. All right, let me just try to rearrange this thing. So circumference equals pi times, and I know the diameter is two times the radius, right? Ooh, that's a little r. So then they just rearrange that to this formula. They bring that two out front, two pi r. Okay, that's the same exact formula. Circumference equals two pi r. Okay, I like to use the first one because it's shorter, but some other people, you might see this in a textbook or maybe on a different worksheet. That's okay, it's the same formula, right? Because two times the radius is the diameter. So that's right there. So we're just gonna use circumference equals pi times diameter. And then the next rule, the area of a circle. Okay, we're not gonna get into why this is because that involves some heavy math, but the area of a circle is gonna equal pi times the radius squared. And remember, squared means times itself. So pi times the radius squared. I have an easy way to help you remember this, and it involves pi because I love, I love cherry pie, I love apple pie, I love all kinds of pie, pizza pie. Let's check this out. Cherry pie is delicious. Apple pies are too. Cherry pie is delicious. Apple pies are too. Cherry pie is delicious. And apple pies are too. Check this out. Cherry pies delicious. And guess what else? Apple pies are too. 
How about that? That's next level. Cherry Pies Delicious Apple Pies R2. That will help you remember these two formulas. Cherry Pies Delicious Apple Pies R2. Let's actually use these. By the way, remember that pie is approximately equal to 3.14. See, that's those wavy lines. That's what that means. So let's find the circumference in the area of the following circles. Okay, we know that cherry pie is delicious. So I'm just going to write that down like this. And we also know that apple pies are two. So let's plug in each one of these. Um, let's see, the radius is nine. So I'm gonna write that down. Radius equals nine centimeters. That means that the diameter equals nine times two, which is 18 centimeters. Easy enough. So the circumference would equal, let's just use 3.14. So I'm gonna put that in parentheses, 3.14 times the diameter, which is 18. So I'm just gonna put that in parentheses as well, times 18 centimeters. What does that all equal? Ah, I get 56.52, check that out, put it right in the calculator. I did not use the pi button, I'm just gonna use 3.14. In case you don't have a calculator, you can work it out by hand. So 56.52, that will be the circumference. Let's not forget our units. Easy enough, right? Now to find the area of the circle, we're gonna use the formula, apple pi's r2. Area equals pi r squared. So the area would equal 3.14 times the radius squared. The radius squared, so the radius is nine, so nine squared is going to be 81. All right, let's put that in the calculator. So when I plug that all in, 3.14 times 81, I get 254.34. I'm gonna show you how to use that exponent too. Because remember, an exponent, if we go back to that rule, it means r squared, that means times itself. So you could type that in as, whoop, lost my calculator. You could type that in as nine times nine, right? That's one way to do it. But to use the exponents, probably the fastest way, 3.14 times nine, and I can use this button right over here, which is squared. And that will square just the nine, because we know our order of operations, right? We get the same answer, I don't really care how you do it. 254.34, and the next part's the important part, the unit. So if we have centimeters measures distance, it's like, you know, from this point to this point, how far it is, right? But area is the region. So that uses square centimeters or centimeters squared. Okay, doesn't mean you have to square any of the numbers. It means that it's one square centimeter by one square centimeter, that much of a region. So that's important to get our units right for area, but you already know that from rectangles. That's how you in triangles, you did that earlier. Okay, so that's how you use the two formulas to find the circumference and the area. Remember, cherry pies delicious, apple pies are two. Let me do one more for you real quick and then you can try one on your own. So looking at number four, I see that the diameter is 22. So what I put here for you is both the radius and the diameter. I know they give you that one. So that's 22 feet, easy peasy. So to find the radius, I just cut it in half, right? So the radius is half of the diameter. So that would be 11 feet. So I'm gonna write down Circumference equals pi times diameter, cherry pie is delicious. Apple pies are too, okay. And let's see, let's plug in. So we know the diameter is 22. So the circumference would be 3.14 times 22. I'm gonna use my calculator to get 69.08 inches. All right, let's write that down. 69.08, ooh not inches, feet. Gotta get that unit down. So that is the circumference, done with that one. For the area, area is gonna equal pi, which is 3.14 times the radius. The radius here is 11, so we're gonna say times 11 squared. And if you put that all in your calculator, double check it, make sure you know how to do it, you'll get 379.94 feet squared or square feet. And that will be the area. I like to put a box around my answers. And the circumference. Boom. Time for you to try number five all by yourself. I didn't label the circle, but I did tell you right here. So go ahead and figure all of those out. Pause the video and let's see if you can do it by yourself. Okay, let's see how you did. 15 gives me 30 for the diameter, right? Cherry pie is delicious. I 30 times 3.14, 94.2 centimeters. Make sure you got your units. And for the area, we gotta plug in 3.14 times 15 squared, which is 225, I guess 706.5 square centimeters. Check that unit. All right, we only have one more type. It's a word problem. What? 
So a cell phone tower has a range of four miles. So let's draw, I'm gonna draw this a little bit. So here's a tower. I know it looks like an X, but it can reach out four miles. That means every direction. So really we're looking at a circle. Oh, I'll do my best, do my best, not too bad. We're looking at a circle with a range of four miles, which means the distance from the cell tower to the end of its range is four miles. And they want you to find the area. Easy peasy. So area equals pi r squared. In this case, pi, still 3.14, will always be 3.14. The radius is four, so that's gonna be times four squared. That's what the area is equal to. So I'm gonna plug that all in my calculator. Here we go with the calculator. Hey, make sure you're not putting a regular two there. That has to be an exponent, right? Because we're raising it up. So that's a common mistake. Students so will just put four times two. But we get 50.24. So the area here will be 50.24. What was the units? Miles. So we're gonna do square miles. And that's basically it. Now you've learned about circumference, you've learned about area. Those are the most important parts of a circle. You got circumference, you got the diameter, you got the, you got it all, good to go. I'm gonna go eat some pie right now. Good luck, make sure you check your work uh, on your packet and good luck on your master check. This is Mr. Kelly and K-Town. Remember, it's nice to be important, it's more important to be nice. See ya.